Okay, Patrick, I think our athletes are learning a lesson here. Stop going to Russia. <laughs> yes, yes. Now they have visas, uh, you know, that are limited. So they, I think it's because uh, they have to go back to have them renewed or something. But I think you can go to the State Department in this uh at this time and say you know i i don't think i'm gonna go back there can i come back and play this year and yes but i was very comforted by the fact that bill garrett says ah we're, we're not really work too worked up about this yet give him 48 hours you'll be wearing adult diapers up there and tell you because uh these this is apparently it's been going on with some other guys who went back before the playoffs and uh they're uh, they're trying to keep them, you know, put a lot of pressure on, keep them at home, and uh, unless you're like Ovi and come out and tell us what a great guy Putin was, who, who knows what the hell's going to happen here? I'm wondering if, wonder if he went home to try to get him get his family out of there, or if he just went home because he loves Mother Russia. I don't, I don't know, but uh, this ain't good, that's for sure. The like the the goalie from Philadelphia that got sent to the Arctic uh, military base, so. Uh, and that the fact that they're making up, according to the agent and the dad, they're making up this charge against Kirill, that doesn't make any difference. They can make up anything they want to, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. so, and Brittany, Brittany Griner this morning, uh, I'm going to use air quotes here, pleaded guilty to drug possession in Russia. But did she? Like, could, could they just say, uh, yeah, she pleaded guilty? This is where no one really knows how they operate. They, I wonder if they if they supposedly cut her a deal that if she uh, pleaded guilty, then she could go home. But That's what they're talking about. Just because they promised her she could go home doesn't mean she yeah. can go home. So, I mean, let's realize this. We are now dealing with Hitler and Stalin here, right? We're dealing with Joseph Stalin here in Putin. This is Joseph Stalin, the guy who started the Iron Curtain. This guy is a madman who is willing to do anything uh, to, uh, you know, because he, I think he's embarrassed that the roar, war in Ukraine did not go, was not the four-day romp like Israel had against Egypt, uh, uh, you know, 50 years ago. So, uh, you know, this guy's, a, this guy's a madman, and he's getting madder by the day, and now he's using hockey players, and I... I would sure, you know, we got to get Louie. We got to get Louie in the car again. To yeah, put the, guy the, the convertible trunk, stick. The hell out of there. Musil like in the trunk. Frank, Frankie Musil way back when. Uh, so The problem, too, though, is, and this is the maddening thing, all of these players were basically told by everybody, you know, with the teams, eight agents, don't go back there. Like, mm -hmm. nothing good can go... And I guess they just all laughed and thought, oh, no, it's Mother Russia. We're going to go home and see our families and go hang mm -hmm. with our friends, and it's going to be great. And, you know, it, the inevitable problems that we are now seeing is, like, could have been avoided by guys just going to Florida. Yeah, yeah. Go hang true. in Florida. Gorgeous. Yeah. Now, we certainly don't know, though. I mean, I was reading something today that the, the whole visa thing is, you know, you got to – you know, you have to get that cleared up with the U.S. State Department, too, because you have to have the visa from Russia. Yeah. The work visa, I don't think it's a permanent one. So uh, somebody wrote that. But, yeah, I mean, it, it, Kirill couldn't wait to get on a plane. You know, he, he, was a, he was heading for Russia a day later, right, after the season ended. So Yes, basically. You know, they, you know uh, it, it's not good. It is not good. You know what we've learned, Pat? Can we have Fiala back. Can we, uh, can you know what we we've learned, Roycey? We've learned this. When our when guys that we consider to be good players go home, it doesn't work out well. M Miguel, he went home a lot, right? Yeah. Progressively just got fatter. Yeah. Guys going home, I'd prefer they stay here. That's my that's my plan. Everyone just stay here. Let's all stay here and bond and we'll go we'll go to a bar once in a while. This is uh you know what he needed? He needed to meet a girl from Edina, like uh, <laughs> like Zach and Ryan, and uh, you know have him stay here, you know, and stay here with the girl from Edina and raise his family. But uh, I, I don't know what's going to happen here. But uh, it's uh, it's 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 
I, I would like to write something coherent on this topic, but I have not, nothing to offer except second guesses the, the decision of going back to Russia and not knowing, not knowing for sure what the details are. But uh, we can also make some fun of Bill Garrett. You know, I guess he's afraid to. In perhaps if they let us, if we let them know what a panic we're in over there, then knowing that we're in a panic will cause them to be even bigger jackasses than they are at the moment. Jackass is too kind of a word. As I said, this is like returning home to Nazi Germany in 1942, right? Yeah. If you're Max Schmeling or something, yeah, yeah, hell yeah, I'll go back. Hitler's not, you know, he'll, he won't do anything to me, you know, so. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's hard to wrap your head around. It doesn't, yeah. I get it, you have family and it's hard for us to relate because sure. we go visit family in Iowa. <laughs> or yes, Wisconsin. and they probably have a nice little spot in the country, and it's you know they look out there, and you know dad goes out and smokes his cigarette in the morning, and everything's nice and calm, and uh, takes a sip of vodka. Yeah, yeah, yeah you don't, uh, you know, dad is quoted that uh, I saw a quote from dad in uh, some story, so dad saying, ah, this is all BS that uh, he. Well, oh, that'll help. That. Yeah, that'll yeah, help. That'll call call really the help. call the Russian government yeah. uh, mm -hmm. liars and see how we're that doing goes. fine. Everyone's doing fine. Everything is great. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, anyway, uh, the you twins blew, the twins blew five leads yesterday. If you want to, yeah, I watched the whole thing. I was entertained. Uh, you know, uh, if they were going to lose, you know, I did the tirade here on Monday on uh, Tuesday or one of those days on Manaya getting sent down for no reason, right? Yeah. So I was happy to see it was Trevor McGill hanging a curveball that cost him <laughs> the ball game, right? Because we have to have that fresh arm, not the guy who's actually been getting people out. Uh, we need that fresh arm, yeah. even if it's a horse bleep arm, right? And the guy, and he, you know, the guy's going to go up there and flip up a little curveball to Andrew Vaughn and say, how far do you want to hit it, buddy? So, yeah, that was an amazing – I don't even call that a bad loss. I call that a richly deserved loss. They yeah. got exactly what they deserve. Exactly what they deserve, the way they've handled their bullpen. They got 100% good for the White Sox, beat them, come back five times, and beat these clowns. So – I like that we tried to sneak Pagan in there in the fifth inning too. Just all right, let's yes. let's try the fifth inning and, and see how it goes. No, you can't hide, dude. You can't it's, hide. Uh, he's only given up seven so far, people. This it ain't over yet. He gave up sixteen last year in uh, in, in San Diego. <laughs> Plus, San Diego is a bigger yard than this one, so uh, he's got God, potential. He could hit twenty if he gets enough opportunity. So. Yeah, let's keep running him out there. Give him the chance. Mm -hmm. Give him the chance to hit 20 home runs as a reliever. Let's do if it. If you win, if you sweep them down there, you're six and a half ahead, right? Six and a half ahead. Or, or, How about Cleveland? Cleveland, you, you could be up by like 12 right now. Yeah, completely gone in the tank. Now the Whiteys are five and a half back, and uh, but the Whiteys have a little problem. They can't catch it. Oh they God! Are not and how about Tim Anderson's play? How about the guy on the video? Let's give a big round of applause for the guy on the video who saw the ball was in Tim Anderson's hand instead of his glove when he made the tag. Yeah. He's the new video guy because the other video guy got promoted and then somebody else got promoted to him. And uh, and uh, I think he must have been on the scene, though, because it was, he's on the scene, right? Because he was quoted. The video guy travels with them, I think, because he was quoted by the reporters here. I, maybe they called him back at the target field then. Wait, are you talking about the like the the, the replay guy? The yeah, Twins, the yeah. Replay guy. yeah, he he travels, I think. Okay, so he's yeah. allowed to talk to the media. The, the, the video, the guy who took over for yeah, Sean well, Harlan, right? Bill Miller, I read our story today. He had a quote from the guy saying, "Yeah, we." Boy, I, it's no, it's it just anyone can talk apparently. With the <laughs> about Pagan. Yeah, he said it was. Talk about Pagan. He said it was obvious that uh, you know it was going to be well. Lance Lynn must have thought it was going to be reversed because. Lance, being the great teammate he is, you know how steamed he was that Tim Anderson walked back out to the mound while they were still looking at the review. <laughs> and on a hot day, <laughs> you idiot! <laughs> you know, big Lance just sweating up a storm, swearing, 
has to go back out there. Yeah, I'm sure he was happy about that. It is amazing that they're uh, they're in such good shape. I mean, God, they hit the hell out of the ball down there this those three days. That they're in good shape with the number of games that they have frittered away. Let's let's use frittered instead of another word. Frittered. Frittered. I like that word. That's good. Frittered right away. But uh, what's with our guy Polanco? He should get a bad back every day. Man, is he taking some serious rips left-handed, isn't he? He just he's got this almost violent left-handed swing now, and he's just a, a great swing and hitting uh, what's he hit six since he came back, five or six since he came back, and it's only a week ago. He's, Where does he sort of fall in? I don't know. Recent Twins history, like you know, in the in the I think post- as a second baseman, pretty dang good. You know, not as a shortstop, but as a second baseman. Uh, I, I was thinking about that. He's a, I'll tell you one thing, one of the great bargains they've ever had. They're going to have to pay him the, again. They should they're probably have to rip up his last year and give him about a four year extension. He's 29. He'll be good till he's 33 or four, I would think. So you can give him, you can give him an extension, but you got him and rise at the top of the order. Oof, that's pretty good. When, uh, Polanco is swinging the ball, the bat like he is right now. They can't keep running a rise out at first base long term. So where does where where do you think in a in a year from now, what's Luis Arise doing? Just super utility wow. guy. Because uh, Kirilov's going to be your first baseman, right? Yes, he should be. Uh, I don't know. DH plays second some, and uh, maybe he's a starting DH, right? But that's his best position, DH. Well, but they had a, they had a three forty hitting uh, DH. In 1997, 96, 97, if I remember right. Yeah. Paul Molitor was like 40 years old when he yeah, was right, DH right. English. Yes. But I don't know. I, a couple of years ago, I thought he played okay third, but uh, yeah. he didn't. Uh, he hasn't looked good over there this year. Now, uh, what is the proper pronunciation of Urshela? Ursh- I believe it's, isn't it Urshela? Urshela. Urshela. He had a bad day at third yesterday. He usually plays pretty good, but there's about three balls that went by him that uh, I, I thought he should have been in the vicinity on. Huh. So he did not have a – he's going to his right. Some people have ripped him that he doesn't go to his right. And uh, yesterday I saw it for the first time, really, that uh, he, he just didn't have a good day. I like him as a player, but uh, he didn't have a good day in the field yesterday. Pat, among good Twins teams, where does this team rank as far as uh, the ability to orchestrate gut punch losses? Because that's what I realized is one thing that's so disturbing is they don't lose normal. Like they find they create ways to to blow games where if they were a bad team, you'd say, okay, they're a bad team. But they're in first place and they still have this this list of just terrible losses. Yeah, well, one thing you got to go through is the idea that you now have eight or nine relievers who can puke it up, right? Back in the day, you had RD and about four other guys, right? You only had about five of them. So by numbers, as far as they have more potential chokers than, uh, than we have, but I don't think you can beat RD. I don't think you can beat RD in 84. And, uh, you know, there's just the whole thing. I, For instance, Emilio Pagan, when he gets cut or released, I don't think your star player is going to be running up and down the aisle singing Jimmy Crack Corn in celebration <laughs> uh, when he gets traded or released like, like Puck did when they got rid of uh, Ron Davis. They found out after the game in Anaheim that Ron Davis was gone and that, and it was the, supposedly the happiest bus ride in Twins history, beating the beating the World Series bus rides. And, uh, of course, they all were on the road, so all the world, all losses on the road. But, but fuck, yeah, he would be one of these. Because R.D. used to, like, sing Jimmy Crack Corn to himself when he was warming up and running in the bullpen and pucks running up and down the aisle singing Jimmy crack corn and the whole bus is singing along with them. <laughs> you, you've broken a few hearts when they're celebrating Lear. And he wasn't a bad guy. He was just a big doofus. You know, <laughs> had a tendency to give up the damnedest old run. Well, well, okay. What would they have to do? Let's assume that they, 
Yeah, maybe they play 500 baseball for the next month or something, and they're still leading the division, and they're they're in the hunt. What would they have to do in uh, three weeks from now before the trade deadline call to make up, you feel like all right, they got a, up, they got a real shot here? Call up the also ran O's, right? Who are trying to rebuild? Take a couple of your young guys and get my guy Jorge Lopez, who lost two games here the other day, but get him to go to the back end of the bullpen with you and you have him and Duran to finish games and uh, one more arm like that. They need one more arm in the bullpen that people don't want to face. You know, I, I kept mm-hmm. saying and the great thing about Duran is they finally got a guy nobody wants to be at the plate uh, against and uh, they need one more of those. And so start looking around for the bad clubs and, you know, Give them Austin Martin or somebody, you know, and one of your one of your prospects, and uh, and make make that trade. One more arm in the bullpen, then you don't have to use Trevor McGill, and then you don't have to, you know, scrounge up these other warm bodies. How about okay, Jorge you Lopez. Should, you kinda... know when you shouldn't lose a game, you shouldn't lose a game when you blow five leads. Yes. You also shouldn't lose a game when Caleb Thielbar comes in and strikes out three guys and makes them look like complete idiots. Right. Yeah. yeah. yeah so. 11 pitches, three strikeouts. Yeah, right. Uh, so I just looked up Jorge right. Lopez. Cause I'll admit, I don't watch a lot of Orioles baseball throughout the week. So he's 29 and this is his first even competent season. He was, a, he was just a really bad starter for like three yeah. years with Kansas city and Baltimore, but now he's just an unhittable reliever. Mm-hmm. How much do we trust that? I trust it. I, okay. You can look at my Twitter feed. Somebody <laughs> looked it up for me from 2021, and the Twins beat this guy. And I said on Twitter, I would take this Jorge Lopez in a minute. I said, because he throws hard easy. <laughs> you know, he was – and I, I watched him a couple of times. The Twins happened to play him one of those, you know, they – Played him one week and then played him another week. And uh, I loved his arm, but he was maybe kind of like here. He, they they decided, oh, I got a good idea. Well, let's throw a couple of breaking balls here and see how far they can hit it instead of blowing them away. But uh, that, that's a live arm right there. And they finally put him in a bullpen, made him a closer, and forgot about him being a starter. And that's that's somebody like that. I'm not, not saying he's the only one, but somebody somebody like that. Who you can get for, uh, you know, one of your top six or seven prospects, and then maybe another one. You know? By the way, he's under team control for two and a half seasons. So yeah. you would, if, yeah, if he's if a, he's for real, you'd have him, and he'd be yeah, he'd be. A, there's a demand for there's going to be a demand for him. But that's don't you think? I mean, that's the the great flaw of this team is one more arm in the bullpen. Yeah, I mean a start. He liked to have a starter too. But right. hey, good news though, Chris Paddock is going to join the team in Dallas. To sit oh. In the dugout. oh, good, good. Yeah, yeah that's going to help him a lot. Can, can remind that you? Can you? Re, he'll be there to remind you you don't have Taylor Rogers. That'll be. Uh, that'll, and I know Taylor Rogers. Inspirational for the team. Rogers had a rough month of June, yeah. and people and people were quick to point that out when I said mm-hmm. this is one of the worst trades in Twins history. But uh, I think I'll still take Taylor Rogers' body of work so far this season. Yes, and uh, the, I saw him. Uh, Come in against the Dodgers the other day, four to one, and he gave up two quick hits and then got three quick outs. So, yeah, I'd take him. I would. I would take him in a heartbeat. And you know, the rough June too was what he had about two games where he gave. He gave he had one game he gave up four, I think. So. He gave it up two days ago too. Yeah. He's. Uh, it's. It's been a rough go lately for mm-hmm. him. But I. I listen. I'd still take him for the next three months over. Emilio Pagan <laughs> hasn't been. Yeah, oh, yeah. My yeah. God. It's over this, over Chris Paddock's sling and Emilio Pagan. Hey, yeah. Paddock is under team control, okay? He's going to sit there <laughs> this weekend and say, don't forget, yeah. guys, I'm under team control. Two more years. We got two more years. One more year of rehab, and then you get then you get all he's got for the 2024 season. That's, uh, yeah, game one World Series, 2024, your starter for the Twins. Chris it, it, is a, it is a really interesting Twins fan base now, though, wouldn't you? Those of us who remain skeptical and have them driving us crazy, and, and you know, and, and the, the – and then the 
actually three groups and then the poll ads can do it. It's all the cheap poll ads problem, you know, even with the $36 million shortstop, the, the commenters at the Star Tribune. But then the defenders who just want to look at first place and say, oh, they're, you know, they're, every, everybody's great and everything's great. We got the defenders now, too. So it's an interesting group of uh, of uh, followers, fans. There. Well, they deserve skepticism. I don't know. Sometimes yeah. I feel like you guys go further down the path than mm -hmm. than I have gone, but they don't. They don't deserve blind faith based on some of the moves they've made the last. They haven't won a playoff game in almost twenty years. So I'm sorry if <laughs> if, if we're not just blindly following them like yeah. the Patriots or something. You know, this is not uh, this is not an era for sports watching where regular seasons mean anything right i mean it's all it's mm -hmm. because of the number of teams advancing to the postseason back in the day way back when they first came here hey we finished third this year good right we were only 12 games behind the yankees 190 games so it was a good year that's good wait till next year and uh, you never you know we, we did not have to be in a you know there's two teams going to the postseason and then four it's uh you know yeah. Now that now it's if you don't do something when this after the season's over, it's a, I mean the wild. Now they got the excuse making fans, but the season was a flop. They got beat in the first round by a team that they were better than, right? So they were the season yes. was a flop. And Extremely now we don't have Gorilla or Fiala. So good luck next year. <laughs> get those season tickets you know in, right? It's now. time to tank, Pat. It's time to tank and get that first <laughs> overall right, draft pick. It's tanking you time. Picks. You got two picks tonight, Jed, right? Do you think yeah, Garen's yep. trying to trying to shop Kirill tonight? Just trying to see if there's yeah, any right. GMs that haven't been watching the news? I'm not panicked. <laughs> would you like a very good Russian player? Yep. Never <laughs> yep. it, or at least the really rights funny. to one. It's not really funny. It's sad. It's, it's, it is terrible, yeah. It's, I mean, it's, the guy's a... Somebody do the world a favor and either send him in a to the gulag or something worse, some fate than that, okay? Anyway, I'm not well, going to lament his absence when somebody gets him, that's for sure. Well, we'll break down the NHL draft with you, the entire first round. Snuggie's kid! I'd like tomorrow. to see Snuggie's kid go to the first round. Snuggie's one of the all-time great guys. What a great Snuggie. guy. Great. Yeah, so he's... Let's get Snuggie's kid in here. Come on. Hopkins right. Lindbergh, right, Pat? Plus, the nickname Snuggie. What more would you want? It's the greatest nickname yeah, ever, point. Snuggy. I think it's copyrighted. But yes. We can check yeah, on that. Yeah, trademark. So, yep. so right. we go from potential assassination to that. Yes. I right. love this part. Let's make it more than potential. Goodbye. <laughs> All right. Goodbye, Pat. All right. See you, Pat. All right. Uh, wrapping with Royce. I'm going to throw it to Declan for the uh, the quick post game take here. <laughs> Sponsored by Federated Insurance, uh, Big Brothers and Big Sisters. That's uh, yeah. That, that's well, my that's post game a, take. It is, yeah. It's uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters. Federated has helped organize the Federated Challenge every year since 2005. They've raised 44 million dollars to uh, to help elevate Big Brothers, Big Sisters, which provides one to one mentoring relationships with kids in need. Find out more how you can make an impact at FederatedChallenge.org. What was your favorite part about the last 25 minutes, Declan? That it's over. I think that's that's that's, that's that it's over. I like that when was... Phil started to fire up with the point, and it just it just oh. kept going because that's happened to me so many times. I got slam dunked down there. I got they posterized did. by Royce yeah. halfway through there, and you I saw made... I saw Declan just like couldn't contain his laughter, too. <laughs> just watching me get dunked on. You've made the point before. Before, yes. Pat before. was Vince Carter. I was the uh, seven foot. Five yeah. Chinese basketball player just putting an arm up. Kinda. You were the Raptors guy against Ant a couple of years ago who got just absolutely destroyed. Yes, I was that That's guy. That's okay. All right. All right. That's uh, wrapping with Royce here, Mackie and Judd.